What's up guys, this is Nick from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson and today we're taking a look at the 2020 Roadster, which is Harley-Davidson's most performance-focused sportster. And I think the biggest indicator of that performance is gonna be the front end on this bike. You've got a upside down front end from Showa and you've got dual disc brakes. And what those two things do is they give you a lot of confidence under braking and they give you a lot of suspension performance when you're riding a little bit more aggressively. The way that that's achieved is with a little bit stiffer front suspension, that means that when you get really hard on the brakes, you're not going to have a lot of brake dive. It's going to help you control the, the movement of the bike. And then those dual disc brakes, they're going to really prevent any kind of brake fade. So when you're on a canyon road and you're stopping from high speeds over and over again, you're not going to experience that lever starting to get softer and softer. We just saw there that we had a, a dual lines going towards the uh, front brakes. What those do is uh, it, it just indicates that this bike is equipped with ABS, which is optional on this model. We've got a low set of handlebars, relatively low by Harley's standards, which puts you in a, a slightly forward-leaning uh, riding position. Just makes you feel a little bit sportier overall. You can see here the analog tachometer with the digital speedometer. I think that really also indicates the performance-focused nature of this bike, making that tachometer front and center and big. Uh, it lets you know exactly where you are in the, the engine revs and allows you to upshift and downshift more accurately with a little more confidence. This is the 3.3 gallon tank that's found on both the Iron 1200 and the Iron 883. It gives you a pretty decent range, I'd say somewhere north of 100 miles, probably right around 100 miles when the, the fuel light comes on, depending on your riding style. Here's the 1200cc Evo based engine. It's a quad cam motor, although it's not double overhead cam. Most quad cam motors would be double overhead cam, but you can still see those push rods featured uh, on the outside of the motor there, running the overhead valve design. The Evo motor's been produced for a long, long time, and I'd say that when most people think of the iconic sound of a Harley-Davidson, just because of the amount of these bikes out there uh, and for how long they've been uh, produced, I would say that the Evo's probably the most uh, remembered sound from a, from a Harley. I mean, the Twin Cam and the Milwaukee 8, they have a very similar architecture and therefore a very similar sound, but the Evo Sportster is quite a distinctive motor, and I'd say that it best exemplifies the sound of a Harley-Davidson. Here we can see the 2 into 2 exhaust, chrome with the black uh, heat shields. Really classic look, I'd say, overall. And uh, we're looking here at the rear, rear section, which the suspension also indicates its performance-focused nature, or the performance-focused nature of this bike, just like that front end. It's very tall rear suspension, the tallest by far of any Sportster. That's going to get you a lot more lean angle. And perhaps more importantly for daily riding, it's going to get you a lot more suspension travel. One of the things that I always have to upgrade on Sportsters is rear suspension. Not because it's low quality, but because it's very, very short, which means it ends up being quite stiff. And so for me, at only 150 pounds, it's just sprung way too stiff and I end up having to swap it out. This is a nice perforated leather seat. It is equipped for two-up riding, which uh, the rear suspension is also going to provide benefit to do, and it's a style that I think gives it kind of a cafe racer aesthetic. Overall, I really like the, the, the look of that seat, and it's actually quite comfortable as well. So the Roadster overall is a, a performance-focused package within the Sportster lineup. It's probably my favorite Sportster. And uh, after we go on a short test ride, uh, I'll talk to you and as will Matt, and we'll kind of explain what we like and what we dislike about the Roadster, but uh, I'll, I'll spoil it a little bit. It's, uh, it's my favorite Sportster by far, and uh, I really hope that uh, if you do come into the dealership, you take a chance on it and uh, take it out for a ride, because I think it might surprise you. So today we decided to take out the Roadsters. So we took out a couple of 2020 Roadsters. Actually, one's a 2019, one's a 2020. They're both basically the same thing. A couple of different colors that they made available, the 2020 model year. So I remember when this bike first came out, I believe it was mid-model launch in the 2017 model year. This was a kind of a surprise bike that wasn't launched at the beginning of the, the model year, but halfway through as Harley-Davidson has kind of become notorious for doing. 
but the, the thing that Harley Davidson really tried to do with the Roadster was to make it more of a performance-based Sportster. And the way they did that was with the inverted front end, dual disc brakes, you got a, a, a larger you know, 19 inch wheel in the front and uh, you got the 18 inch wheel in the rear and, and just a, a little bit taller sitting bike. And so you can really, this bike is like perfect for up in the canyons, good lean angle, certainly a lot better than like the irons. So this is a bike that right away when I started riding it for the first time, even out on the freeway, you know, I'm not even doing like the twisty stuff, like, like lean angle stuff. Out on the freeway, this bike is just going to have a better overall ride just because you have a taller suspension. So the Roadster, if I personally was going to buy a Sportster, which is unlikely, but if I did, I would buy a Roadster. I like the Roadster a lot. You know, one of the, one of the biggest things that uh, is something that I can't get over with the type of riding I do on a Sportster frame is just freeway riding. You know, I usually tell people if you're going to be doing you know, 50 percent or more out on the highway 65 miles an hour plus out on highways then a sportster probably isn't the best bike for you sportsters are a little bit more of around town single lane roads roads where you, you know, are that are either really well paved or you know really smooth or you don't you don't really frequently get up to 65 miles an hour plus so you know usually like really good like application for a sports would be like urban areas around town if you're like downtown LA, New York, you know, Chicago, whatever it may be, then a sports would be a good bike. Or maybe you live out in the country, like rural, rural roads where they're not really you know four lane highways like we have here in California. Then a sports are probably a decent ride for you. Uh, again, stoplight, stoplight stuff, they they excel. And it's a bike that you can get into at a lower price point, you know, relatively speaking, when compared to the other Harley Davidsons. So, yeah, Roadster is a great bike to, you know, also if you have like a nearby canyon road, uh, you know, like like locally to us, you know, you got Angeles Crest, Azusa Canyon, Glendora Mountain Road. There's a bunch of them. And so, if you're going out on a Sunday or whatever, go up there. This is a great bike to do that on. A bike that you can definitely ride harder if you're, you know, trying to do more more spirited riding then this is a great bike to do that on you know it, it enables you to push yourself a little bit more through the twisties and whatnot and even when you're out on the highway this is also a more comfortable ride you know, i will say that it does have the 3.3 gallon fuel tank so that's still a limiting factor that has always kind of been there in the sportster family they're not really known for their fuel capacity and this bike certainly uh, doesn't buck that that norm it has you know a, a low fuel range on a tank I, I get this question a lot people say how far can i go on a tank you know, on a tank on this bike, you're probably going to get, you know, somewhere around 110, 120 miles, you know, somewhere around there before you have to fill up. Uh, and that's, you know, on the on the longer range side. But, you know, realistically, you're probably filling up around like every 100 miles or so. But, um, yeah, the, the Roadster, again, I, it's, it's a bike that's very different than the other bikes in the, in the, in the Sportster family, the 48, definitely a bike that has a lot of the, the normal Sportster constraints to it, along with the iron, you know things like your range, you know, the lack of of highway comfort, the fact that it only has a five-speed transmission as well. So, although out on the highway today, I didn't feel like I really needed a sixth gear out there. You know, at 3,000 RPM, at in fifth gear, you know, we were doing about 70 miles an hour or so. So, you know, plenty, plenty of. Uh, room there to accelerate out on at higher speeds. For me personally, I like the 1200cc a lot. One thing I was commenting to Nick earlier uh, when we were coming back here is after riding the soft tail so much, the, the Sportsters just really seem like, like they're underpowered. And that being said, it's not an underpowered bike, especially if you're someone that has a real specific use for the, the Sportster. If you're a guy that's, that's just getting into the, the Harley Davidson world, the Sportster is a great starter bike. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, what, what's a good starter bike in the Harley world? The Iron 883 is a great bike. You know, that's, that's the only 883 they offer now. You know, really, Harley Davidson really cut down their Sportster offering this year. They only have four Sportsters now. You've got your Iron 883, your Iron 1200, your 48, and then you have the Roadster, which I think was a good move. You used to have the, the 1200 Custom for the longest time. 1200 Custom has been eliminated. You might ask, well, why'd they do that? My personal opinion is just, it was just sales. They just weren't selling as much. I think that's a lot to do to the style as well. Just, you know, a lot of these, the, the younger guys that are buying these bikes 
just really like more of a modern you know blacked out bobber style to them which the roadster doesn't really do that but it's kind of your performance uh, based bike so it kind of fits that niche a little bit but the other three bikes your two irons and your 48 are you know they're basically bobbers blacked out bobbers and that's kind of what's selling right now so i think harley just kind of eliminated some of the fat that really wasn't selling as well. There was also the 883 low that they've offered for a long time now. And again, it's a bike that I rarely have even ordered in the past four years just because no one came in for it, no one asked for it. And we really didn't sell any. So, you know, that, that bike was kind of geared towards people that had a, low, a shorter inseam. And, you know, it's called the 883 low for obvious reasons. And so it really wasn't that much lower, if at all, lower than, than an Iron 883. So people just went with the one that they liked the looks of more, and that more often than not happened to be the Iron 883. So I think for that reason, yeah, a couple of those bikes that I just mentioned, they, they scrapped, and so the sports for offering is just down to four bikes now. Another thing that, you know, that I, I would enjoy riding these bikes all the time just because there's little things that I get reminded of all the time. And, Another one of the things I got reminded of is just how cool this engine is. I just love the air-cooled Evolution engine. You can just hear the valves, and you can just hear it sucking air, and just, you can just hear the engine performing its functions and almost feel it firing. It's just a, it's just a really cool, alive engine. Just the character, you can feel it, you can hear it, you can see it. And so the Harley feel and sound that we talk about so often is 100%. Uh, there on a on a sportster so that's something that that is really cool that i liked a lot but just going through the the turns and everything there were a couple turns that we took nick and i where i would have scraped the pegs on an iron but on this bike you have that additional lean angle so again if you're someone that likes to ride a little bit more aggressively if you have a little bit more confidence in your riding ability then you want to you're going to want to go up to a roadster i think a lot of guys that have the riding ability that maybe get an iron 1200 probably should have gotten the the roadster uh, guys that maybe are coming off of dirt bikes and are competent riders that know, know that have the ability and they end up riding these bikes hard i think they go to an iron just because they like the look of the bike a little bit more which nothing wrong with that but when it comes down to it being able to ride the bike that you want the way you want and it fulfilling you know more of a practical functional purpose i think for me at least usually trumps the looks, although the looks can be a close second. So maybe just keep that in mind if you're thinking about what, what sports are to buy. If you're planning on riding it hard or you want a bike that you can grow into more, it's gonna be a little bit better on the, on the freeway and a little bit better through the twisties where you can ride it harder, then the Roadster is a, a good bet for you. The brakes are nice too, just having that dual disc brake up there, especially if you're going down like a windy canyon road and you're on the brake a ton, you're gonna want the, the dual, dual disc brake to you know avoid any type of brake fading as well. But overall, yeah, I love the Roadster a lot. It's a cool bike. I'm glad Harley Davidson made it. Uh, it definitely fits a certain niche in the, the lineup, especially the Sportster lineup that I think was unfulfilled for a long time. My last piece of advice, you know, I usually like to talk about who these bikes are best for. The Roadster, really good bike for people that have a real specific niche use, and that is local or canyon riding, you know, aggressive riding through the turns and twisties. And you know, so in, if you want to hit like a certain price point, if you want to do any type of extended freeway riding, or if you want, you know, something better at higher speeds, you know, if you're cruising at 80 miles an hour for long durations out on the highway, you're going to want to get the soft tail or, or bigger. Okay, so we just got back from a quick test ride and uh, I wanted to take some time to talk about not only the specific features of this bike because I kind of gave you a, an overview of those when we did a walk around, but I want to take some time and really talk about how those features impact the overall experience of riding the bike because, you know, when you go to dual disc brakes and an upside down front end and uh, a taller rear suspension, you know, obviously it's, it's one thing to list those things, but it's another thing to describe what in practice uh, those things translate to. So. Um, Really, when we look at this bike, it's obviously a performance-focused uh, Sportster within the, the, the lineup. So uh, those things that I just listed, the taller suspension, uh, you know, the upside down front end, the dual disc brakes, those are all things that were done in order to give the bike uh, a little bit more of an edge over the other bikes in the lineup when it came to riding 
you know, say in the canyons or uh, you know up the coast on, on some windy roads. You know, when you start giving uh, you know some uh, some lean angle to this bike, when you start rolling on that throttle a little bit harder, you know, the the suspension is just going to do a better job of keeping the bike balanced and sorted in the middle of the corner. And you know, these dual disc brakes up front, they do a great job of, of slowing the bike down. You're not going to experience any fade under what I would consider normal riding. Uh, you know. Uh, for this particular chassis. I mean, I don't imagine someone taking this to the track, uh, unlike maybe some of the previous generation XR bikes, which I know do get tracked occasionally. Um, I think this is more of a, uh, a retro classic style bike that does have some sporting potential rather than something like the XR 1200, which is taking, um, you know, almost uh, like a, a Buell-like engine and sticking it in a, in a Sportster and then putting fully adjustable suspension on it. Um, you know, that's taking it a step further and almost building kind of a, um, you know, a I don't want to say a, a cafe racer, but, uh, you know, maybe something like a, a resto mod, like, a, it's, it's a, it's a kind of a different animal. Uh, this is much more about that classic aesthetic, but not sacrificing anything in terms of, of performance. You know, you can do uh, a whole bunch of different types of riding on this bike. And, and not feel like uh, the bike is sacrificing anything to get that classic look and charm that you do get from this bike. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Sportster chassis, but uh, I don't like um, a lot of the aspects of the other models in the lineup, uh, aside from this bike in particular. Um, and this bike addresses most of the complaints I have about those other Sportsters. Uh, first of all, it it adds significantly more rear suspension travel. So um, even though it's still too stiffly sprung for someone of my weight, it does a better job controlling the bike over big bumps without bottoming out um, or without just having to be way too stiff. You know, for me, the biggest letdown of, of an iron, you know, 83 or an iron 1200, has got to be that rear suspension. Um, you know, it's fine for riders that are heavier than me, um, but for someone my weight, it's just not sprung correctly. So. Uh, I've ridden plenty of Sportsters that have uh, had suspension swapped, and I've actually had custom suspension made for a Sportster for uh, um, for me as well, and it, it totally changes the experience. And it's it's a similar situation with this bike, where the experience is, is pretty dramatically changed by the addition of uh, taller suspension in the rear. In the front, we've got the upside down front end, and that's another complaint I often have of the Sportsters. Not that they have uh, traditional front ends, I don't have a problem with that. Um, it's that they're a little too soft. Uh, you know, you get hard on the brakes and you just get a fair amount of front end brake dive. It does translate to a fairly plush ride in the front. You know, you don't feel like any of the bumps are really that jarring. Um, but the result is that if you do try to ride in a more spirited manner and you can start getting hard on those brakes, you know, the front end just feels like it's, it's kind of washing away from you. I understand why Harley did it. I mean, these bikes are cruisers and, you know, I'm really kind of an idiot for, for pushing them. Um, but when you stick a front end like on on this bike on, onto the Sportster chassis, it really does kind of help the bike shine in a way that the other Sportsters don't. You know, they've got the classic look, feel, and sound of a Harley, but this one has those while also giving you uh, just a slightly higher performance uh, threshold before the the bike starts to you know fall apart. None of these are really bikes I would consider to be you know bikes that are best riding at ten tenths of their capability. Um, obviously, it's a it's a cruiser, it's not a race bike, but this bike doesn't fall apart in terms of its handling until you start pushing it beyond where you'd probably want to be riding on the streets anyways. And that's because the short suspension travel means that, you know, when you're hitting expansion joints on the freeway at 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, there's just not enough travel there to really make it comfortable. And then uh, the taller gearing just makes the, the bikes a little bit less buzzy. You know, when you're on an 883 and, you know, the bike's, you know, sitting at 3,800 RPM, 4,000 RPM, you know, it's just not a relaxing experience. The bike's more than happy to do 80, 90, uh, over 90 miles an hour, so it's not like you can't keep up with traffic. It's not like you don't have passing power with an 883. It's got plenty of grunt. It's just not as uh, relaxing, like I said. When when the motor is able to sit closer to that 3,500 RPM, 3,400 RPM uh, mark when you're cruising out on the highway, it just makes for a, a more comfortable riding experience. So I'd much rather be on the freeway on this bike because of the suspension and because of that taller gearing than on the other Sportster models. Personally, it's just a those two factors make a, a pretty big difference for me. You know, in terms of who I think this bike is for, I think this is for the, the guy that, um, you know, he really wants the classic aesthetic. You know, he doesn't care about having the absolute maximum performance. What he wants is a bike that's got a lot of personality, a lot of character, 
but when you take it out onto a windy road, it doesn't fall apart. Um, and you know, obviously a lot of cruisers, a lot of classic styled bikes, you know, they look good sitting there, but when you go and you start riding them on a canyon road, you know, you're dragging peg or floorboard, you know, the suspension's too soft and it's, you know, kind of wallowing around and you get, you know, movement uh, front to rear on the bike and it just doesn't feel settled and planted in the middle of the corner. You know, these are things that, these aren't problems with the, with the Roadster because of the way that it's been set up from the factory. And, you know, there's certain compromises. The suspension's a little bit stiffer than it would be if they had gone with a, a less performance focused setup. Um, you know, the, the seating position is not as ergonomic as some of the more relaxed fit, like you know, something like the 48's a, for me a little bit better fit, you know, with the, the forward controls um, on the Sportster platform. I'm not a tall guy, but uh, you know, mid controls on this is actually probably something I'd swap pretty quickly to, to rear sets. Um, I think it suits the, the style of the bike a little bit better. And uh, in terms of the seating position, I'd, I'd actually, I might find it just as comfortable, if not a little bit more comfortable, while also giving me uh, a little more of that performance feel that I'd be looking for on this bike. Um, but in terms of who I think it's for, it's for that guy that, that wants the classic style but doesn't want to sacrifice too much in the way of performance. You know, this bike's uh, really quick on the back road. It's a lot of fun to throw into the corners and uh, it's got plenty of grunt with that really torquey 1200cc motor. And of course it's going to sound unlike pretty much anything else out there because it's an air-cooled push rod, uh, 45 degree V-twin. So um, that means it's going to have that character that most modern bikes lack. And uh, you know, this is a, a modern bike with that really classic feel. So yeah, I don't think you can really go wrong with it if you're looking for a bike that's going to give you a lot of you know, character and a lot of personality and a lot of fun uh, when you're riding at you know, eight tenths of the bike's capability. I think that's the real sweet spot for this bike because you know, it just feels um, very planted. It feels very uh, capable at that. You know, I didn't push it harder than that because it's just a, you know, a demo bike, but I have had a chance to ride other ones when, when we've had demo trucks here. And, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those, those bikes that does really, really well um, when you're riding, you know, up a, a spirited Cannon Road. So uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's also, a, I'd say, a pretty good commuter um, with that taller suspension, uh, with the relatively narrow bars, the 3.3 gallon tank. Um, you know, you're gonna be able to split lanes pretty easily on this bike without much concern. And, um, you know, the seating position isn't overly hunched over like a lot of, uh, you know, more performance focused bikes are, where you feel like there's, you got a lot of strain on your, your wrist. You know, you don't really have any strain on your wrist. It's, it's upright enough where it's not a problem. Um, and even though you don't have wind protection, uh, you're, you're leaned forward into the wind just a little bit. And so that does mean that, you know, you don't feel like you're constantly holding onto the bars at 70 or 80 miles an hour um, just to stay on it, you know. And uh, of course there are various windshields uh, available for the bike. So if you do a lot of highway riding and it's at speed, there's a way to set it up. If I personally bought this bike, I think one of the first things I would do is probably an exhaust and intake. I think, you know, that's a pretty common thing for people to say, but on this bike, I think the, the character of the engine in stock form is a little too sedate for the capabilities of the chassis. And what I mean by that is that you know, I think this chassis would really benefit from a, like a louder, more rambunctious, more rev happy motor. Um, and there's plenty of ways to do that with a Sportster. Obviously, uh, you know, even something like the, like I would try to almost build something like what the XR1200 had uh, in this chassis. That motor, I think, would be a really good fit personality wise for the chassis. Because now that everything else has been upgraded performance wise, uh, you know, like the suspension and the brakes, uh, I think that the bike could really use a little bit of, uh, of extra um, grunt from the, from the motor, a little more sound, obviously, uh, but also just a little more of a rev-happy nature. Um, so uh, just to make the bike feel a little bit more lively. Um, you know, an exhaust and an intake and a tune goes a long way towards that, just a stage one upgrade, but I might be tempted to do a stage two with some you know, horsepower focused cams. So all in all, I'd definitely recommend this for anybody who's looking for kind of a performance focused, um, uh, classic styled bike. Uh, it's, it's a really good option for that market. Uh, the only hesitation I would have in recommending it is if you do a lot of highway riding, it does only have five speeds. It, it's not too buzzy out on the highway provided you're staying below 80 miles an hour. But if you're trying to go faster than that regularly, it, it would get kind of buzzy if you just sat there for sustained speed. Um, and then I'd say it does have a pretty tall seat height. So if you're just starting out, it might not be the best uh, bike to start with because it is 
you know, it's over 500 pounds and it is quite a tall seat. So uh, if it's your first bike, unless you're a tall guy or a, a tall gal, I, I would recommend um, potentially starting somewhere else. Um, but uh, that's just uh, one word of caution. You know, if it is your first bike, do bear in mind it is a bit on the tall side uh, in terms of seat height, at least within Harley's lineup. And in the rest of the, the, the motorcycle market, it's not a particularly tall bike. So um, I, I don't want to scare you away from that, but definitely when you go into the dealership to check one out, uh, sit on it and, and make sure that you, know, you feel like it's uh, a comfortable height for you because um, it is one thing that most people don't think of when they think of Sportsters. Sportsters usually have a pretty low seat height. This one on the other hand is a little bit different. So just keep that in mind.